Hello everyone, my name is Vitaly Glebichkin, I'm speaking for Alex Sharonov and in this video we'll talk about the Curves tab in 3D LUT Creator. You can see six different curves here, luminance curve, saturation curve and four RGB curves. Above the curves there are buttons that turn them on and off. Luminance curve works for channel L in LAB color space and it only affects luminance. It is similar to the master curve in RGB space, but the master curve also affects saturation. If you up the contrast in the master curve, it makes saturation stronger in midtones area. If you do the same in the luminance curve, color stays the same while the luminance changes. To return the curves to default, Control click on the on off button. You can also set the luminance to the constant value to see the color of your photo. The next one is saturation brightness curve. It shows brightness horizontally, bright on the right, dark on the left. Saturation is shown vertically. The middle is the fault saturation. If you bring it up, the image is saturated. Bring it down and the image is desaturated. This curve allows us to change saturation individually in different tones of the photo. For example, you can saturate the darks, desaturate the lights. You can make it as complex as you wish. This histogram shows saturation in different brightness points. You can also move the cursor on the photo to see where the particular color falls in the histogram. Next we have classic master and RGB curves. You already know how this works. The master curve is basically R, G and B channels combined. Changing the master curve and changing R, G and B in the same way produces the same result. See the effect of R, G and B curves. Now see the master curve effect. The master curve might seem unnecessary, but it is convenient to use when you want to keep the colors unchanged. Let's take a look at the bottom buttons. Reset returns all of the curves to default. Degrade affects RGB curves to bring the photo to neutral colors. This photo is mostly grey, let's try another one. Press Degrade and the program creates curves to make colors neutral in average. Let's try another one. This is similar to the white balance calibration, but more detailed. You can see how many points there are on the curves. Let's try some more photos. Before, after the grid. There are four ways to use degrade. The average method calculates how much color there is in the photo. If you have a lot of green and not a lot of skin tones, the faces will change color to compensate. The min max method calculates color range. So the photo with green and little faces would probably benefit more from this one. The green method changes red and blue channels based on the green channel. The equalize method evens the histograms. There is a similar function in Photoshop, but it works on the master curve only. Pressing Degrade turns the graded photo into a neutral one. If you invert the curves with the Invert button, you will have curves for grading. 
Now we can import another photo and apply the grade to it. Another way to copy the curves is to take a graded photo and drag it into the curves, which is basically the same process. Neutralizing curves are built, inverted, and the current photo is processed. Please notice that drag and drop into the curves works only on Windows. On the Mac you should go to Menu File, Import Curves from File. If the original photo is already graded and you apply curves from another grade, the grades are combined. If you don't want that, you can turn on the inverted import button. What it does is when you drag the reference photo into the curves, the program first neutralizes the original grade and then applies the new grade. So, if you import the curves with inverted import button off, the curves are built without regard to the original colors. When you turn the inverted import on, it builds the curves depending on the original grade. I have an unedited photo from the same shoot, let's try to copy the colors. Drag the edited photo into the curves, now we have a color gradient similar to the previous one, edited in Lightroom. Different methods also apply to dragging the photo, let's try them and see which one works best. We should pay attention to the equalize method. When you use it with inverted import, the histogram of the original photo is turned to the reference photo histogram. It's the only method to copy the contrast along with the color. If we drag a dark photo, our photo darkens. And vice versa. Let's see this method in action on the picture. Here is the original photo, and I have an edited version. Let's copy the curves from it. Here we have both color and contrast of the edited photo. You can reverse the process, although there is a low resolution JPEG and the shadows are almost lost. You can see that the program recovers some details, even from a dark JPEG, and it looks similar to the original photo. Before, after. This would be pointless, but it's just an example. You can try changing the photo's brightness level. We had a bright photo, now it is more mid-tone. Or a dark photo becomes bright. Another thing is copying the tint from the vignetted picture. Here is the original photo and the edited one. If you try to copy the tint as we did before, the shadows will be too deep because the vignette affects the curve. This is why I cropped the sides of the picture that had vignette. And then used the middle part to copy the curves. 
Now you can load the whole image and get results similar to the edited photo. The last button is Move. If you have distorted curves after import, you can click this button repeatedly to smooth them out. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.